Alright, so this is this is what I was gonna say, right? Um the God principle. I remember last year I was starting that. This year I wanna continue on that. I don't want it to be too long of a series until there's more developing information in the real world and it's not just me saying how I think about these things and principles. But the God principle is the connecting principle to everything, like I've said before. And a lot of times in our current understanding of reality, from whatever aspect that you look at reality from, whether it be religious, scientific, political, whatever. We always seem to talk about the finished product, which is what we see today, what we experience today, what we will experience in the future. This is the completed product. The God principle talks about the one that started the concept of this product. The universe is a product of his power. So he's the one that created the microwave. He's the one that created the food that's about to go in the microwave, the dish that is going on top of all of that stuff. The entire concept of heating up food in the first place. <clears throat> that's how I look at it. And so when you look at inflation, um, evolution, inflation, space, time, particles, atoms, motion, expansion, when you think about uh, molecules and everything that came together and created what we see and experience today, the God principle just connects it all together. When you think about how dreams are so much separate than the real world in a physical in a physical form, but you know you experience it with damn near all the same senses. Plus some. You even get vibrational tingles on a higher level. So and you'll say like, wow, where how does how do we experience an entire universe within a universe? How does that connect to the physical world but without it interfering? And you think of things like the God principle, someone that created all things to be together. I mean, everything is formed off of everything else. Everything in the universe is formed off of everything else. All of information, all of energy, all of matter, it all comes from each other. Everything that ever was and whatever will be started from something else. That's where you get the evolutionary um, principles and things. Because evolution don't take away God. It just explains the process and time constraints in which it had. So yes, let there be light is the broad statement. But there was even a, there's even scriptures in within let there be light. It's not let there be light, let there be people, let there be earth. It, it's not that. It's let there be light. And then over time, it came to be good. That's when you start thinking of evolution, like, OK, so it evolved over time to become how we how light is structured today. So the let there be light statement I keep referring to is it's like the ultimate bar of creation. Start. It's like the start button of energy and light and photons and all of those types of physical matter in the universe. But even within that, there's a process of time. He was making it perfect. He wasn't, it wasn't just instantaneous and then everything came to be. That's not in any Bible, any Christian related to any Bible. There's not an instantaneous creation. It's time over time. It came to be perfect. Remember, he perfected these things. So it probably was a little chaotic. And that's why I don't, I don't discount philosophy. I don't discount science. I don't discount politics. I don't discount history. I don't discount religion because all of these things together explains the same story anyway. If we can stop being arrogant about whose information is should be dominant or who's the most accurate, none of us is. There's trillions of things that we don't know about. So let's put everything together and see how it all blends and how these stories shape into one 
big concept, which is the universe. Anyway, this is God Principle. A Mill Entertainment. Like and subscribe. Follow.